All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, it's a continuation, a long overdue part two for this uh, calculating reactions that I did for a beam problem that had a hinge. And so what I'm gonna do for this video is just finish off the shear and moment diagram. Now, as a reminder for shear and moment diagrams, I have my positive sign convention over here on the right. And below it, I have the two primary relationships that I need to draw shear moment diagrams, which, you know, this DVDX equal to W, oh, you know, that's what, what that's saying is that the slope of the shear diagram is equal to the value of the distributed load at a point. And if you rearrange this in terms of integrals, then what it's going to say is that the change in shear is equal to the area under the distributed load. Similarly, for this dm dx equal to the shear, all that means is that the slope of the moment diagram equals the value of the shear at a specific point. And if I rearrange this, multiply both sides by dx and, and set up the integral, what it says is that the change in moment is equal to the area under the shear diagram. So here's what the beam looked like in this uh, problem. And I'll put up a link like right about here. This old problem had a fixed end at one point, a roller support at the other end, a hinge right about here. And it was loaded with a distributed load, this span, and had a five kilonewton concentrated force right here. And the dimensions or the lengths of this beam were five meters, five meters, and six meters. I went through the problem and I, I calculated the reactions. And now if I wanna draw the shear moment diagram, I wanna redraw the free body diagram. One of the first things I wanna do is redraw that free body diagram with the reactions in place. And so in my beam, what I found was a 55 kilonewton meter concentrated load at the left, thick support, an eight kilonewton vertical reaction, and then a, at the right support, which was a roller, a vertical reaction of three kilonewtons. And so now I wanna go ahead and draw my shear and moment diagrams. In order to do that, the first thing I like to do is go ahead and draw vertical lines at what I had defined as discont discontinuities. And discontinuities, they're beginnings and ends of distributed loads, anywhere that you have a concentrated force or a concentrated moment. So here, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw vertical lines at all the discontinuities. So here, I have a discontinuity because I have a concentrated moment and a vertical reaction here. So boom, I have, this is a, this, this point right here where the hinge is, is discontinuity because of the beginning of the distributed load and not because of the hinge. All right, those look like pretty good vertical lines. I'm down with that. All right, and now I wanna go ahead and let's see, I'll, I'll set up my shear. This will be my shear diagram. It'll have units of kilonewtons. And one thing to remember is that th these equations were defined based or derived based on a coordinate system that started going from left to right of our beam. So basically the or origin of this coordinate system was somewhere over here and I went left to right. And so I have to obey, if I wanna use these equations and the way that they're written, I have to obey this left to right process. And in general, if you go left to right, you're gonna find that things are, are nicer using this this convention and I, I you know I recommend going left to right all the time until you feel really really good about going you know right to left or doing other things you have a really good understanding of shear moment diagram so here I'm gonna go ahead start my shear diagram I'm gonna start here at this point I have this eight kilonewton concentrated force pushing up. So I go up eight kilonewtons, boom, eight kilonewtons. And the thing to remember is I need to know for each between from discontinuity to discontinuity, I need to know the start, the change and the shape of my diagram. And in this case, I'm starting at eight kilonewtons up here. Uh, I could go ahead, I could cut and prove that this is a positive internal shear of eight kilonewtons. But I'm gonna tell you right now, if the arrow is pointing up and I'm going left to right, I'm going up. The change here, I have no distributed loading from discontinuity to discontinuity. So my change is none. I'm gonna end at eight kilonewtons and it's zero loading here. So this graph should be constant. The antiderivative of a zero is a constant. So I'm gonna have a flat line, boom, right here. And just and that just says that my distributed load is zero. So the slope of my shear diagram is zero, which is a straight line, done. 
Now I'm here, I hit this discontinuity. This discontinuity tells me I need to go down five kilonewtons. And because the arrow is pointing down five, so I go down five, that takes me to three kilonewtons. Again, my loading is zero here. So I don't expect any change from discontinuity to discontinuity and my shape is gonna be a flat line again. Boom. Now I am here. Does a hinge do anything for me? Absolutely nothing. What I should, what I should get is that when I draw my moment diagram here, here at the hinge, I should get that the moment here is zero. All right, so hopefully if I did everything right, if I calculate these reactions correctly, I'll end up with a moment of zero here. But when I draw those shear and moment diagrams, I can go ahead and act as if the hinge isn't even there. Here I've got this, this shear at three, I have a constant distributed load. So I would suspect my shape here is going to be linear. And the change, if I look at this diagram right here, or this relationship, it tells me that the change in shear is equal to the area under the distributed load. And that means that here, this area under the distributed load, it's a rectangle six times one. So six kilonewtons, that's the area under the distributed load. So I know I need to change six. And, and technically, these arrows are pointing down, so this is a negative six. But you know, the other thing I can do is just say, oh, the arrows are pointing down, so I gotta change down to negative six. I'm uh, sorry, I gotta change down a distance of six. So that'll take me to negative three. And my line here is going to be linear because I have constant distributed loading. So I'm gonna have a straight line right here. And this value here should be negative three kilonewtons. And this is my shear diagram, done. Now I go ahead, I'm gonna repeat the process for my moment diagram. This line will be for my moment diagram, which will have units of kilonewton meter. And again, I, I'm gonna figure out where I wanna start from. And according to this drawing here, I have a concentrated moment of 55 kilonewton meter. And I can go ahead, I could cut, again, I could cut right here just at the support, apply equilibrium equation, and prove that my internal moment there is a negative uh, internal moment according to my sign convention. But if I draw all my concentrated moments, a simple little tip that I discovered or I realized when I was a student is that if I draw my concentrated moments on the left side, you know, and go and I go left to right, the arrow, the direction of the arrow tells me where I should start from. And this one is pointing generally down, right? If I, as long as I draw it on the left side of the point. So this, is, I should start at negative 55 kilonewton meters. So uh, let me see, I probably need some more for that. So here's my negative 55 kilonewton meters. The change of my moment diagram, if I rearrange this, tells me that the change in moment, or I should write delta M, is equal to the area under the shear diagram. And so here, if I look at this area here, this area is just eight kilonewton times five meters. So this is 40 kilonewton meters and I have a positive area above that the shear diagram is above the, the horizontal axis so I have a positive 40 that means I'm going to go up 40 and so that'll take me to negative 15 negative 15 kilonewton meters so I'm going to change positive 40 to negative 15 and the shape because I'm constant, I'm one antiderivative of way here. So my shape for the moment diagram here is linear. So bam, I'm just gonna connect the dots. Boom, there you go. And then I go ahead, I'm gonna start at negative 15 here. The concentrated force does nothing to my moment diagram. And the change again is gonna be the area under the shear diagram, which is here. This is this area over here, which is three times five. So that's 15 kilonewton meters. Boom, and if I change 15, that's gonna take me to zero, yay. And that zero is good because I have a, a hinge here and the moment, the internal moment at a hinge has to be zero. Yes, all right, so there is my moment diagram up to that hinge. And then now I look over here and you know, this is going from three to negative three. I'm going down at a rate of one kilonewton per meter. So I know my zero here happens this distance is three meters. And I would know, and I can say the change of my moment diagram would be from here to this point right here. This area is one half three kilonewtons times three meters, which is 4.5 kilonewton meters. So I'm gonna increase all the way up to where the shear is zero right here, which is represents a local max point, I'm gonna change from zero to positive 4.5. My shear diagram is linear. My moment diagram is parabolic, x squared. 
x squared on both sides of this and what I have here is going to be a parabola and because my shear diagram here is zero the slope of my moment diagram equals the value of my shear and with my shear is zero I know that my line has to be horizontal or my shape has to be horizontal here so I know my my moment diagram is actually concave down. If I calculated this area right here, I would also get that this area right here is negative 4.5 kilonewton meters because that's the same triangle dimensions as that the red area. And so that's going to take me down to zero. And it's again parabolic. And so boom. And this is my moment diagram. All right, hopefully that was useful. And finally, after years, I have drawn the shear and moment diagram for that beam with the hinge reaction problem. Let me know if you have any questions. Take it easy. You know what's up. Structure.